Hello Tauruses and welcome to Deku Tarot. I'm going to be doing your weekly tarot reading for April 22nd through the 28th of 2019. Um, alrighty Tauruses, um, this is for Taurus Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Um, it cannot, will not resonate with every single one of you and that's okay. Be sure to check out the weeklies as well as your monthlies for your Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Um, sometimes our other placements resonate better with us or they have really important messages that we need to hear. Alrighty, guys. Actually, before I started this off, I wanted to show you this amazing um, rose quartz that I got the other day. And don't worry, the crystal video will be out soon. I'm waiting for the person I'm working with to get better. They've been ill, um, so we had to put it off a little bit. But anyways, I don't know if you guys can see this that way. I'm going to try to focus it. But he's like carved, and he's got like almost like this little cross thing going on. Um, I'm trying to like put it in the light, but anyways, it's really, really cool, and I really love it. It has a great energy. Just got excited to show you guys a fun crystal that I got. Um, anyways, Tauruses, um, I want to say thank you guys so, so much. You guys are always so supportive and so wonderful. Um, my biggest support group by far, so thank you guys. Thanks, Taurus gang. Um, be sure, if you guys haven't, to like, share, and subscribe. It definitely helps the channel, and I really appreciate it. So... Taurus. This week we have um, the sun in your sign, which is amazing. It's Taurus season. Yay! Um, Venus energy. Sorry, guys. I need to fix my lighting for a second. Um, yeah, it has that nice um, Venusian quality of sensuality, um, getting back out into nature. And as I say this, there's a huge rainstorm happening, so it just feels very fertilizing. Um, you know, we're watering the plants, we're planting the seeds and taking care of them. It's a very... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Very earthly based time of year. So get out, go outside, connect with nature again. It's a really wonderful energy to this time of year. Um, but anyways guys, this week we also have Pluto retrograding Capricorn on, I believe, Wednesday the 24th. And it's retrograding in your ninth house of spirituality, religion, foreign places. So we could be seeking a lot um, more grounded, clear answers to some of life's biggest questions, or at least that's what our focus has been on since around 2008 when Capricorn first entered Pluto. Um, and when it goes retrograde, you know, we might be thinking or um, knowing that really faith in terms of our spirituality is not just believing or knowing all will be okay, or even just our faith in terms of life. Um, knowing that it's going to be okay at some point, but that these moments of deep pain, confusion, really do serve a purpose, even if we don't fully understand it when it's happening. We'll pick ourselves back, keep going, and then when, once we um, have 2020 hindsight on it, you're going to be like, wow, I went through that for this reason, and I understand it now, even though I couldn't, and all I could feel was pain and sadness at that time. So um, we're bringing understanding to situations like that. All right, Taurus. This week in terms of general life and career, let's see what's coming in for you. We're using my Hobbit Tarot for this. There's quite a thunderstorm going on. So maybe things are just being, it just feels like there's a great sense of release that comes to me whenever um, there's a really heavy rain, um, especially if it's been really humid, which it has been. So it feels like a deep sense of release. Like there maybe might be releasing a lot of emotions this week in terms of you know past storms that have been happening. We might even weather a storm. Queen of Wands. Interesting. Because it like literally just started up. I thought it was done raining. Can I focus on this, please? Thank you. Um, of course not. <laughs> so let's see. Queen of Wands. Other things in terms of general life, career, that are going to be happening this week in the lives of my Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. It's this that wants to come out. King of Cups. I knew he was going to come out. He kind of flung himself out earlier. Um, wow, it's so weird. As I pulled him, the door flung open. It says it's so windy and rainy out right now, but maybe a water sign is opening up a door for you. Or as a door opens, we're closing out something, a painful chapter here. Interesting. Um, we're definitely closing out a chapter. Like I said, it just, it's a storm that just like started as soon as I started pulling the cards. And that just feels very significant for me. Um, interesting. Six of Swords, general life and career. There by the Queen of Wands this week for my Taurus son. Queen of Swords. I'd be dealing with some people this week. Taking on a more decisive and forward-moving energy in terms of business, career. 
The Queen of Wands is kind of a leader. What she says goes. She has a lot of confidence. Um, the, you would just hear, I hope you guys just heard that door fling wide open. I need to go pause this and close it in a second, but kind of like it. <laughs> Anyways, ooh. Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords, King of Cups. Clear by the King of Cups here. Yeah, Nine of Cups. Oh, yes. In the middle of the week, we get the Nine of Cups here. I love that with the Ten of Swords because as we... Maybe we are ending a really painful chapter, but the center of it all this week is because we have a dream, we have a hope. There is some sense of fulfillment with the Nine of Cups, getting to a point of, you know, making your dreams come true. You know what you want, you know what you're going for, and you can see it unfolding before you. You see that it's possible. As we leave some things in the past here, as we go through some pain, we're seeing that it's leading us here. Clear out the Ten of Swords, the Six of Swords. There's an ending and a leaving for sure possibly moving. Yeah, six of coins. Um, interesting. We got two sixes here. So it feels like whatever has happened here, whatever period you've closed out has been for the best. You might be dealing with a few people here in the beginning of the week, which I find interesting. So I'm going to pull actually one more clarifier for all this court energy. All this. So we have two queens and a king. We could be dealing with um, a couple of females. Um, to me, the Queen of Wands feels more like your energy. If we're collaborating with anybody, it might be this water sign or this air sign. Um, you could finally see things progressing in terms of a business opportunity if we're working with, you know, a Gemini, an Aquarius, um, an Aries, a Sagittarius, possibly a Leo. I mean, really any of the, like, <laughs> any of the earth, water, air signs here. I'm not getting any super specifics, but this kind of feels like Aries energy or something that maybe we've started in Aries season again. We're the ones pushing forward with this energy, honestly. Yeah, it feels to me that we're, yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah, there's something, wow, okay. Something emotional might be revealed in terms of a workmate or something. Something that has followed, like, you know, fallen through. But, you know, we have all these stand-up people here. What it's surrounding is this Ace of Cups reverse. Some type of loss, some type of frustration. Um, interesting, an emotional loss. You could be dealing with a coworker or a friend who might be going with, through a breakup, possibly. Um, again, a Scorpio is usually the King of Cups. Um, it could be a different water sign, like a Cancer or a Pisces. Um, Queen of Swords, though, to me is usually Gemini or an Aquarius. Um, maybe a Libra. So again, we could be hearing something emotional. Ooh, and as I said that the rain came down so hard. So yeah, I do feel like we're dealing with some emotional outpourings. I don't feel 100% that it is you guys. I feel that somebody's coming to you with an emotional outpouring. Um, and I don't know why. I mean, this falls in your work category. If this is a love situation, yeah, we might have a few people involved in a love situation where finding something out painful or somebody's revealing their emotions to us or revealing what, how they're really feeling. And it's it's causing a lot of tears to be shed, honestly. Whenever I see the Ace of Cups reversed, I always see a lot of tears shed, um, a feeling of loss, confusion. Um, but there's stability there. Like People are being stand-up about what they're saying, how they're feeling. They don't seem to be hiding things. There does seem to be a real sense of truth to the week. So I do feel that Libra full moon brought a lot of balancing in terms of truth coming out, in terms of us you know, facing whatever this Ten of Swords is and why we're feeling it. Um, we're going to be focusing more, again, on this Nine of Cups, though, and the Six of Coins. Um, getting to here, getting to where we want to, and we do see it. We're going to be feeling it in the middle of the week, towards the end of the week, for sure, of balancing out as we leave this behind. We're definitely leaving something behind. I don't know if it has anything to do with this emotional outpouring of what somebody's telling you. Um, maybe somebody is, like, leaving a work situation, or they're like, I can't work with you, or... Again, there's some type of emotional release here, whether it has to do with you or not, or it's just like someone coming at you, running and crying, like, oh my god, this person broke up with me, or I have to move, or something happened. Interesting. Let me know how that resonates with you guys throughout the week. But again, the two six at the end of the week, I feel like we're getting what we, we're getting some type of balance restored in terms of money, finances, material, and we're moving on from this negative period. We're taking these swords out. We're recognizing, you know, the loss for what it is, but there's no point in, you know, wallowing. Once you're at the Ten of Swords, it's keep on moving forward because I have a dream and I know I can do this. I know I'm going to get to where I want to go. And I know that the journey has been painful. Again, that um, Pluto in retrograde energy <laughs> of crossing some big bridges, knowing that things are going to be okay and understanding that whatever we're going through definitely has a purpose. So let's pull a Stacey DeMarco Halloween Oracle for you guys for a message from Spirit for the week. 
message from spirit for the week for my Taurus sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Guys, thank you so much for all of your birthday wishes and happy birthday to all my Tauruses. How could I forget to say that? I just celebrated mine on the 21st. I'm a cusp baby. Hope everybody is having a wonderful Taurus season. I always feel such a nice sense. I mean, maybe it's because I'm an Aries Taurus cusp, but those are like, I just always feel such growth in those seasons, such connection with the earth, good energy. It always just feels nice. <laughs> All right, we get invisibility, authenticity. Love it. Okay. So invisibility. Um, and many, oh, where is it? <laughs> um, the concept of invisibility is a double-edged sword. Whilst it is a powerful tool to be able to gain information or to assist whilst no one sees, individuals using it are privy to information that may not be meant for them and it may be taken out of context or unethically. It is a power of manipulation and easily abused. The idea of hiding away and not being seen is also a big part of the dark side of this concept. We are all born to shine our light out, of, out into the world and to take our roles. Hiding our talents, not expressing our true selves, stealing others' ideas or work, and being someone else rather than your authentic self are all aspects to consider should this card appear in your reading. In your reading. So yeah, um, whatever we're going through, we might not understand it at this time, but we know that we need to be authentic with ourselves. In the face of these moments, in the face of the Ten of Swords, chapters ending, painful cycles coming to a close, painic, painful karmic, uh, mentally painful as well, um, chapters of our lives here are coming to a close and we need to really um, recognize and release and release it, really, um, and look towards the future. Be authentic with ourselves at this time. Be really authentic. Let's look at love for you guys. And I want to use, I'm actually drawn to use my Aquarian Tarot. Love for my Tauruses this week. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Love for my Tauruses. April 22nd to the 28th. What's this that wants to come out? We get the Hermit. Hmm. It's kind of a lonely energy, possibly Virgo, but feels very just lonely in general. Ten of Cups. Ooh, nice. Death. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's there's a lot of tens in this reading so far. Three of Wands and what's this that wants to come out of the world? Wow. What a powerful week for love for you. We entered our season and we're like, gonna make some changes. All right, so death card at your center of your, the center of your reading is transformation, which is interesting. Um, I just kind of preemptively shot this video the other night. I was gonna kind of put together a vlog of some things I wanted to talk to you about. And a lot of it had to do honestly with transformation and um, overcoming um, really what the process of transformation is and how people expect it to be versus how it is. Death is a painful process. Transformation is painful, releasing, letting go. It's usually letting go of something very comfortable, something that we become accustomed to, something somewhere where we feel safe. I'm going to shut that door real quick though. All right, better. But anyways, there's a lot of painful process to this and a lot of people expect, you know, releasing, letting go to be you know, like a day-long process. It takes a long time, and sometimes it's really hard to see, you know, or we, we're unwilling to see and let go of what we are being asked to. It's hard to accept messages that come in. It's hard to accept endings. So again, it is painful, but it does seem like whatever you're ending here, whatever type of transformation your relationship or love life is going through, it is leading you to see a, a lot of progress here and to see really the best outcome. When the world shows up, it's your best outcome. It's a new beginning, a prosperous new chapter. It's getting to where you've been trying to. It's almost like a reward in terms of a completion. So let's check out the Hermit and the Ten of Cups. Clarify. I'm just bringing up the energy of the Hermit. The Ten of Cups. Here. Fill in the gaps. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, there's a transformation. Feeling very lonely, very inward, very, very much like you're meant to be alone. I think for some of us are like, you know, maybe it's better if I'm alone. I mean, for, yeah, we could be dealing with a Virgo, and this could be a story about, you know, transformation of a relationship with a Virgo here, um, and seeing things progress, chapters, and, and, you know, a real transformation of the relationship, but to me, this feels like if we felt alone, 
and if we have been kind of locked inside of our head, inside of ourselves, going through something which I know Taurus is having going through, we're having a real shift in circumstance, a real shift in how things are are going. And the Wheel of Fortune turns, you know, we don't know what it's going to land on, but when we see the Ten of Cups with it, you know, it feels like a jackpot, right? You know, it's the ups and downs of life, but it's the beginning of a really positive cycle in terms of love, a transformative cycle. We have two cyclical cards here, and maybe it's because we're entering, you know, our solar return, or, you know, this is the first full week of it. But we're seeing a lot of prosperity in terms of love, transformation, wanting to take things to the next level. Uranus and Taurus came in and was like, don't just stay comfortable where you are and do something about it. <laughs> All right, Ten of Cups, the death card. Clarify what's bringing up these energies for my Tauruses this week in love. Wow, you guys have really nice love reading this week. The Magician. And so again, you guys are the ones making the choices, making, putting things together here, making, um, putting in the effort. Why can't I say this? Making the magic happen. When the Magician shows up, he has all the tools. We get the sword, we get the cups, we get the wands, we get the pentacle down there. And he's got infinite magic. He has knowledge. He's connected. I mean, look at the way the light shines down there. You know, the way it goes up. And he's surrounded in the, um, in the back by his head with white. Because he's letting in that pure white light of spirit and understanding what to do. He knows he has all the tools. He's ready for this. He's ready for the transformation. Ready to go through what needs to be done here. Because he's like, I have prepared. Knight of Pentacles. Some of us here might be entering long-term relationships or planning some big future goals here um, because of the transformation of our relationships. It seems like things are going better if they haven't been. There's love here. We might be falling in love if we're single with a Virgo, possibly a Scorpio. Yeah. Somebody, yeah, Ten of Swords reverse. Look at this, guys. We're closing out. Now we're taking out those Ten Swords. And in that first part of your reading where we were focusing on general life and career, we saw those Ten Swords upright. And in love, we're taking them out. We're moving on from this. We're letting go of the past. If we've had negative fights, um, issues in terms of our relationship, and we're coming back together here in this transformation of a monogamous relationship, you know, we're putting in that work. We're we're realizing, you know, where we stand here, and if we want to make a difference here, we have to do it. You know, we're translating whatever we have inside here, whatever this transformation, whatever this love is that we want to bring to the relationship, this transformation, and we're actually doing it. So if that's having the conversations, you know, planning out new future goals, saying, do you want to be my, you know, my partner here? Like if you're, you know, solidifying a relationship that where you've been dating, you could be also, again, um, planning for really big future goals, planning for a life together. Coming into really amazing relationships that are absolutely transformative, that are giving you, you know, what you've been looking for. So this is an amazing week for love, Tauruses. Let me know in the comments below what we're going through. Um, and again, guys, these are big cyclical energies. When major arcana come up, it's not just like that. This is stuff that's been probably happening since maybe even the last Libra full moon. It's been a process, but it, we can feel it coming to a close. We can feel things changing. We can feel the shift, I feel like, from maybe even a month or so ago. Because when the you know when this when these cards come up you know we're we're closing a big cycle. It's not like we're gonna feel it immediately. We're not gonna notice the changes a hundred percent immediately. But if we really look at it, yes, we're gonna see that things have changed radically. All right, single Tauruses. What are we getting here? Single Tauruses for love this week. This is my adoring virtue romance angels oracle cards and we get religious factors your love life is being influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path so maybe we're um coming from two different places here we're interested in somebody who again will radically transform our life but we want to make it work because maybe this person comes from a different background um maybe if we are you know from a straight family and we are you know not heterosexual and we're interested in the same sex or somebody who's radically different than what our parents brought us up to believe or our friends brought us up to, you know, like, not brought us up, but, you know, people that we've dated growing up or we've been in contact with people you'd, your family would expect you to end up with. This, some, this person can be radically different. And we're making that change. We're accepting the transformation that, you know, what this love is. But make sure that, you know, we can still make this work and we're not coming from two places that are so different we cannot compromise. All right. Taurus couples. It is safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. 
So yeah, if you have been kind of worried in your relationship and you felt alone and maybe you were afraid to love this person to continue on with this relationship because you weren't sure where it was going or, you know, you weren't sure how this person felt about you or how the relationship was going to end up because of recent issues, um, it is safe for you to love. Love this person. Express your love. Show them that you care. Um, open your heart here. Open your heart to give and receive again the highest energy of all. All right, Tauruses, so um, check out your weeklies for your other placements. And if you guys want to book a private reading, all that information is right below this video in the description box. I am taking $5 off from April 22nd to the 30th um, for my 20-minute and 30- to 40-minute readings, okay? So you can take $5 off of those. Just a little birthday special um, till the end of April because um, it's my, it was my birthday on the 21st. Um, so anyways, guys, thank you so much for all of your support. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful, blessed week, Tauruses.